Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today I talk about steganography. To change things up today, rather than talking about some sort of security news story, I'm going to cover a security-related topic, steganography. If you follow our Secplicity blog, you may have seen or read a blog post from one of my network security threat researchers, Mark LaLiberté. He basically wrote a post on some historical cryptography ciphers. In short, it was a fantastic and educational post on how a lot of basic cryptographic ciphers work. If you ever wanted to learn this or figure out how to break certain cryptographic codes, I highly recommend you check out that post. So to go along with that security education, theme, today's video is going to teach you about steganography, which is somewhat related to cryptography. To start, steganography is made up of two root Greek words. One is steganos, which is basically concealed, and the other is graphene, or writing. So essentially, steganography means concealed writing, and that's a pretty good definition of what steganography is. Basically, steganography is the act or art of hiding one message in some other medium or message. Now, the first recorded use of this term was way back in 1499 by a German abbot named Johannes Trithemius, who wrote three books, one that had the name Steganographia. And basically, these three books on the surface appeared to be about magic, but really hidden within the books was content about cryptography and steganography. Now that said, steganography was actually used well before this. The first actually recorded usage of this sort of secret message technique was when uh, Greek kings would shave a vassal's head, would tattoo a message on that vassal's head, wait for the hair to grow back, and then have that vassal uh, go across land to deliver this message to somebody else. Obviously, if he is intercepted by spies and others, they would have no clue he had a message under his hair. But once he got to the recipient, he could shave his head again and they could get the message. Thus was born steganography, the art of hiding secret messages in something else. Now, it's important to note steganography is not cryptography. The idea of cryptography is even if somebody gets your message, it is so encrypted and messed up that they would have no way of reading that message without some sort of special key. Steganography does not necessarily encrypt the message. It's more security by obscurity. It's the fact that the message is hidden in plain sight, uh, that the recipients don't even realize that they're handling a hidden message. A common example of steganography, which you might have encountered, is uh, invisible ink. When you were a kid, you probably remember writing with these invisible ink pens that only showed up under certain circumstances, like applying heat. One of my personal favorite examples of steganography comes from one of my favorite uh, works of fiction, The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. You might remember when Bilbo had a map showing where the gold was in that lonely mountain. But of course, he didn't realize there was a hidden message in this map. When they took it to Elrond, they found out they were moon letters. And when they held this map up to the moon at certain times, only then would the ruins showing the true secret of the door at Lonely Mountain show up. Uh. Something strange. Let's see. Yes, indeed. There are moon letters here. See? What are moon letters? Runes that can only be seen when the moon shines behind them. So that's a great fictional example of steganography, even though magical runes don't exist today. In short, steganography is the idea of hiding one message in another type of data. Now transitioning to the digital world, steganography can be hiding text and images, it can be hiding images and audio, it can be hiding files and video. It's basically hiding one type of media message in another type of media. And really, there's very few limits to what you could do here other than really size. You know, when you're doing this, you're taking some of the limited space of this particular medium, and you're forcing something else in there without actually ruining the content of the original medium. Uh, that means a video file is pretty big, so you're not going to be able to hide a video file in a small bit of text. On the other hand, it's trivial to hide a small amount of text in a video file. 
To give you a more concrete example of this, let me show you one of the most common ways to use digital steganography, and that's to hide text within an image. There are many open source tools to do this, such as iSteg or OpenSteg, and many, many others. But for this example, I'm using a Mac program called iSteg. Basically, with this program, it's simply a matter of opening the original image, picking a blurb of text. In this case, I'm actually picking an excerpt from The Hobbit that talks about the moon letters, and then getting this program to process that. Now, actually, what the program's doing can be very complex. In fact, there's many different ways you might hide text messages within images. One of the most common ways is using the least significant bit. Basically, every pixel of this image is made up of different bits. And uh, what this type of steganography is doing is changing that last bit of data to actually represent the hidden message. And on the wider picture, it's hard to see all these different changes. It won't actually affect the image, but that last bit provides enough room to hide different types of messages. And that's just one of the many different ways you can actually hide data in some other type of data. By the way, if you want to learn more about the least significant bit steganography, be sure to check out other videos online. In any case, once you run this simple iSteg program, you now see the result, which is another image. Now, if you put them side by side, you can't really notice too much of a difference. You might notice the colors are slightly different, but the image actually looks almost untouched. Even if I zoom in 1000%, the changes to the image are quite minor. In fact, if you never saw the original image, you may not know that this image has been modified in any way. That said, if I actually run this new image through my iSteg program as well, this time to extract its data, you can see that it spits out that same excerpt from The Hobbit. So that's digital steganography. And again, that is just one example of what you can do with digital steganography. You can also hide images in audio or video, or you can even add uh, files into sound. In fact, talking about pop culture references, one of the popular hacker shows out there, Mr. Robot, used a program program called Deep Sound, which is another steganography application. This one, however, will allow you to add small files to your audio files or even to your CDs. In the show, you actually see Mr. Robot hiding some data that he's creating about his different victims and putting it on different musical CDs in his collection. And by the way, Deep Sound is just one of the many available tools you can search online. You can also hide images within audio using tools like Coagula and using things like Sonic Visualizer to see those images. And by the way, if you pay attention to Mr. Robot Easter eggs, there's sometimes hidden surprises in the video that you may not expect. In any case, hopefully this has been an educational introduction to steganography. It is a great way to hide data. You do need to remember steganography is typically only security by obscurity, meaning by itself steganography does not encrypt the data that it's hiding in some other medium. That means if someone actually knows that there's a hidden message there, they can retract it and actually read it. That said, you can combine steganography with cryptography for a very powerful way to encrypt messages and send them without anybody knowing better. Anyways, I hope you found this random video educational. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching.